what can happen if your extension cord is the wrong size for what you're doing. This motor on this power washer is rated for 25 amps. These typical outlets in your house are rated for 20 amps. I have no idea why this power washer has a 20 amp plug. In fact, the plug even says 15 amp. I guess it's possible that somebody just put this on here. I know the wires inside my extension cord are rated for 20 amps. The gauge of the wire is 12. You can see my extension cords are hard to pull out because everything started to melt together. You can see the plastic is just melted. In a typical house, it's difficult to find a 30 amp plug. Almost every outlet in the house is a 20 amp outlet. So there's no doubt it's convenient. If you want to find a 30 amp breaker, your dryer has one. It's certainly not convenient to pull it out and plug it in. But if you don't want your plugs to melt together, you either do that or don't run your power washer very long and heat everything up. Now this jackhammer, it's rated for 30 amps, but at least it has the correct plug on it. Now they do make an adapter, but it's not a good idea to do this. It's possible to do it, but a bad idea. If you ran it more than three minutes, it'll probably overheat or this'll happen or worse. So you've got to keep an eye on which extension cord you're using and make sure they can handle the load. And it's best not to play games with an adapter too small. You can see the black on this plug, which means it was pushed too hard. Safety is not something that you can go back and change. This red extension cord is even thinner than the orange one. The orange extension cord is rated for 20 amps. The red one, 15 amps. One of the biggest mistakes I see are people plugging in an electric heater like this. Just plug it in with its own plug. If you plug it in with an extension cord that is too thin, the extension cord will actually heat up. If you're using an extension cord that's too thin, you want to touch your extension cords from time to time, and if they're too warm, get them out of there. It is not worth the risk of fire. One of the best things you could probably do is not buy extension cords this thin so you don't have them around. A cord like this would have the gauge of about 16. It would be good for Christmas lights or your cell phone. It's best if you buy the thickest gauge you can get, which is usually 12. They will typically handle just about anything. Unless somebody puts the wrong plug on and allows too much current to go through the extension cords. The good thing is this typically doesn't happen. The takeaway here is if you don't want to have to worry about it, get the thickest extension cord you can. I'll shave off a penny on just about anything except this. These thicker extension cords cost more, but they're going to keep you out of trouble. Who wants to take every item you're going to plug in, check the specs, make sure it can handle it? I don't think it should be legal to sell an extension cord that is not gauge 12. That's what the wiring in your house is. That's what your extension cord should be. The extension cord should be an extension of your wiring in your house. So if you're going to use a thinner one, make sure it doesn't get hot. Now, if a cord like this does get hot, you've compromised the insulation on the cord and now it's dangerous. You could test the insulation on the cord, but it's probably best to throw it away. I know it sounds harsh, but it's cheap insurance. So if you are wondering what happens if you use too small of an extension cord, now you know. Well, I hope you found the video useful. I appreciate your time and thanks for watching.